Hi there. Um, it, ignore that. That set dressing is for people who don't have faith in their own on-screen presence. And I exude charisma, so I'm good. Um, so, last night I found a very good site for watching pirated movies. Um, I'm not going to say the name of it, though, because to be frank, the less eyes on it, the better for me. So, I kind of went on a binge. But uh, first up, last night I watched... Cut off. Um, cut off exudes pure, fresh out of film school energy. Um, very low budget. You can see the budget a lot in this. I. That's not a, to shit on it. Um, I might be shitting on it a little bit later on, but I mean, budget is an issue. You can't really. Uh, it's it's there. It's not. It's frankly, um, you can't shit too hard on someone about the budget. Still. Uh, the, the lack of budget was very noticeable. Um, it is a one-man show, essentially. There are some bit players, uh, including um, uh, one of the characters who's there for an extended time, but it is essentially a one-man show about an audio engineer um, who, after an encounter with a, uh, a dominatrix, uh, finds himself uh, menaced by a sinister presence in his apartment. Um, so a lot of one location. Uh, some little trips off in there. Um, so here I'm gonna be very careful how I word this. I don't like call. I don't like assuming motivation for a lot of things. I don't like calling things like uh, pretentious or malicious or like oh clearly this is a dig at because like that's assuming something out. Like it's um, calling something pretentious is a very rude thing. Because it assumes that the person speaking is doing so without sincerity, or that they don't actually have like, and it's entirely possible that someone is making something with like with pure sincerity in the heart that they're they're really trying to say something, but they don't have like the correct language to really enunciate it, which is fine, which is fine. That's like how you grow is by attempting things and failing a little bit, and then realizing okay, this isn't for me, or uh, I'm gonna try something different here. Um, so I, I'm not comfortable calling anything pretentious. I, I think I prefer to take things at face value and say it's like they really were trying to say something here. That being said, if you're the kind of person who could call something pretentious, you would call this pretentious. <laughs> so our lead character is a misanthropic, um, self-loathing audio engineer um, who goes off on long soliloquies about... Um, history and rock and roll and um, weird poetic shit. Um, God. I'm in a very weird place with this movie in that I frankly do not hate it at all. Um, I can see where it lacks a lot. I can see where this is a first time effort, um, I mean, just go to IMDb and <laughs> um, look at these credits and you see it's a lot of, uh, this is a lot of person's, people's first movie. Um, but I still enjoy people trying something new and um, yeah, and like there was a lot I really enjoyed. Um, some clever use of cinematography for such a confined space for this one just bad apartment location. Um, speaking of set dressing, um, but the apartment was actually like nasty in like exactly the correct way. We're like, oh, I fully believe a big gross weirdo lives here. Um, like it's exactly dirty in that way. Um, a lot of oh, I do want to say the sinister presence, the ghost, the monster, whatever is actually haunting him. It's it's. Uh, once the art scene a lot, so fucking fixing my shoulder. <laughs> it once it's shooting for artsy, so it's very ambiguous as to what the thing actually is, um, what it represents in this man's life. Is it his own self-loathing given form? Is it his obsession with his work? Um, no idea. Is it just a big scary cable monster? It could be that. Um, but there were a few shots with it that like. Genuinely, I was like, okay, that was a little upsetting. I didn't like looking at that. Um, where a lot of it you just see as a silhouette in like doorways or whatever. Um, ooh, there was like one genuinely like, okay, that was a pretty good scene where 
uh, he's sitting on his couch, and you see, like, a blanket rise up behind him, like, and, like, is there someone underneath him? Or something underneath him? That, that was pretty cool. Um, a lot of red and blue. Uh, like, ne or, like, neon, like, blue and neon red for, ne fucking red means scary. <laughs> um, uh, but I, 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 I'm always a fucking sucker for color. I love, um, <laughs> but... Uh, there's some pretty cool shots. Uh, I, I did like there was one scene where he's kind of having a breakdown, so it's in his tiny little bedroom, and the camera's rotating rapidly, and like he's seeing like him like like taking his shirt off, and then him like whipping himself because he's freaking out or whatever. Um, yeah, was, there's a lot I like in this movie, frankly. Um, and again, I'm doing my thing where I grade on a, a, a curve for indie art house shit, not art house indie like film school shit, um, it, it's a movie made by people who definitely were trying to say something and make a movie like, also I do love, um, uh, some special um, some Super 2 special effects, I like, um, <laughs> I, I they clearly know how John Conrad failed the thing because they did the thing with the uh, little cables as tentacles, but they just yanked them and played the footage backwards so it looked like they were we're going around, I like that. Um, yeah, I would, I will say, like, the long diatribes, the long, um, soliloquies and dialogue. Like, there was one bit where he's talking with a dominatrix he's about to hire, and it goes on for, a, like, a grip, and I was getting a little frustrated, and it's pretty early on. Like, at this point, I, the movie hadn't won me over yet, and that wasn't winning any points, how fucking long that goddamn conversation went on, because it... Went on for a while, and it went in a circle. And I was like, Jesus Christ, can we move on? Um, there's also one bit where it's him and the dominatrix talking, and, like, he's giving a, a long speech, and it's just, like, centered, like, him, like, uh, like that, like, just him and, like, a yellow wall behind him. And I kept, like, expecting it to do, like, a John Waters slow push-in on his face, like, while he's giving his long speech. And it didn't. It was a very static shot. And I was like... And I know they knew how to do, they know how to do like, creative, interesting shots, because they had done that before. I was like, oh, I, I thought something else would happen there. But nothing did. Um, but yeah, it's a strange... I didn't hate the lead character, the lead perform, or actor's performance. The character I hate, because, like, you're supposed to, but, like, he himself did an okay, okayest job. Uh, it's a lot of people's first, re first credit, so, you know, I cut a lot of slack. Um, you could do a lot worse your first time around. Good for them. Um, oh, I will say, like, around 45 minutes in, there's a bit where he just goes to Vegas for, like, three minutes, and it just, he's just there, and he's driving down a country, uh, desert road, and it cuts back, and I don't know what that was for, I don't know why that was in the movie, um, what it implies, whether he, it was him trying to escape from the apparition, or, I don't know, it, it probably meant something and I just wasn't being, paying attention, or... It was just some weird B-roll they had, and they wanted to put a scene where he goes to Vegas in it. <laughs> anyway. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to call it pretentious. You totally can if you want to. That's a fair assessment. But I still kind of liked it. Um, three out of five. Again, like Lemonheads, if you have like the exact same kind of weird taste I do, where you're totally fine watching a not great movie, but you still like it because it was made with effort. Bye.